that nitrogen, instead of having a double bond, gets a single bond to a hydrogen. So that's one of the hydrogen with that. This being the flavin, this isn't the NAD we just looked at because we're all out of order and none of the artwork is even fitting in the screens, but I'm doing the best I can for you. H and an electron. So that's going to be another bond. So there's one on that end and the one up on that end, which now takes those double bonds from the side. Because remember, there's one out there that's out there. Now it's between these carbons. So I just think if you draw the double bond in there, it's bringing more life to it. And I actually, you know, I ought to just show the one I drew with the pen because it looks better than your fancy art stuff here. Just draw like a tornado thing going on. Wherever there's a double bond here, instead of drawing the two lines like they do, well, one of these is sigma bond, which means the electrons are directly in between that carbon and directly between that oxygen. Well, the other two electrons in the pi bond are up in space. It's not flat, it's up. Here's a double bond between those carbons. That's up. You got three flat rings, but boy, the pi's are up here. So you got to look at this thing. If it's got a three dimension to it, what's the big kinetic wave? chemical chemist with the technical definitions, you would say this flavin is reduced, or would you? I know. See, even how confusing it is to me. This one is in the oxidized state because it's ready to take on the two hydrogens. These are really two hydrogens. H with an electron is a hydrogen. H with an electron. You'll see people write it like, oh, it, it added an H. Well, it only adds an H if it's got the electron with it. And that's where proton acid base chemistry, every student in the world gets confused because they start writing H's. Don't get me going about my biology chemistry teacher in college. She cut, started doing the photosynthesis for the beginners in her biology be intro class. Starts writing hydrogens. And I go, wait a minute, that's just a proton. She goes, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're taking it a step further, kids. We're learning what this looks like by what it does. So what it's doing is it's consolidating the double bonds by bringing the electrons in to form a single bond to a hydrogen there, a single bond to a hydrogen up there, moves the double bond in here between carbons. The oxygens are just out there. So I picture with that negative charge out there in space, that must be have something to do with the way these things fit into the enzymes because they use this key and lock model for it. So the molecule has to have a certain shape to fit in. So in the back of these proteins, it's got something where this double bonded O here makes it fit in. So they know, okay, there's a ribo, there's ribo, and he's got his electrons. We're gonna have to break some of them their bonds. This is something new I came up with, just the dots. So to show the art, the kids can kind of connect the dots. They can look at these are spatial dimensions to atoms. And what this would help you do is learn the color coordination of them. So find the molecule. So the kids could actually connect the dots and find out if you connect them right. I mean, that's what would be fun. One of the little exercises I thought of doing when I was a little kid, many, many years ago, we used to put this plastic over the TV and you'd have crayons and you could draw on the television screen because you had this real thick plastic to fit over it. And then the television station, whatever the show was, would show this, the sticks and it would show you what to draw. So it was kind of cool because you'd draw, connect the dots as they were doing it on the TV you could do this on a computer screen, I'd imagine. 
So here we go. We'll go and we'll connect the dots to show where these bonds are to make a molecule. So on the internet, we could do this and see if you connect the bonds right. Like say you go from this carbon to this carbon. I can tell already that's not how that goes because I know this goes this way. This makes a wing, this makes a wing. For my cartoon characters, this is the citrate. Citric acid is the bird. So you can't have a bond from here to here. It wouldn't make the wings fit right. Now this up here is a perfect example of why art can teach you now. Color coordinated, so see blue, this is green. We're sticking to my color coordination. Green is oxygen. Green is electrons. Green is electronegative. Positive, red, hydrogen. The protons will always get that. So whenever it's plus charge, which a proton, hydrogen is out there, it's red. Do not draw oxygen red. Ugh, that hurts me. Carbon should be black. Oil, carbon, when you burn stuff, it's black. So carbon's black, oxygen's green, blue is nitrogen. I've said it before and I'm probably wrong, so I'll say it again. Azure or something, however they pronounce nitrogen in French, has the same meaning as blue. Something like that. I don't know how the French say it again, but something I think it's related to the A-Z-U-R-E, which is azure, which is blue in some other language. So in France, the word nitrogen actually means has some association with the root derivative of blue. So look. Here's a rainbow. It's a double bond, huh? Right? Because remember, that's coming out of the out of the plane. Here's another double bond. So see, this shows, I think this is cool. I mean, this shows the chemical structure without having the traditional lines that just get in the way, don't they? So now look here. Now you got a really intricate molecule. Yellow. What element is yellow? Sulfur. Right? So there's the sulfur. Now this, I can't tell by the resolution. If it's got red around it, it's a positive. So there's a positive field here, which might be a nitrogen. Remember we were looking at our NAD plus? This nitrogen here has a plus charge around it. You got a sulfur here, you got a double bond. Oh yeah, there's a double bond on that nitrogen. So it's probably got one bond, two bonds, three bonds, four bonds on that nitrogen. Gives it a plus. Up here is a ring. And since it's connected, those are double bonds. So this is probably an aromatic ring with the ni two nitrogens in it. See where those two nitrogens are? That was like the one from the centipede. Because one had the nitrogen on opposite ends. One had it on opposite ends, but the same level, whatever you want to call that. Here's a nitrogen out in lone space. So if you had a little table of molecules that already had the lines in telling you what they were, you could line them up. Or we could do this on a computer screen where the lines, you put your little plastic over the computer screen. I mean, wouldn't that be great if you had a little four-year-old that grabs the pen and as the computer diagram goes from here down to here, this oxygen's got an H on there, so the little red gives it a beep. I think there's even a lone pair of electrons that gives them eyes. So you draw it down to the tail. Out here's a wing. Out there's a wing, and you'll see it turns into the citric acid seagull. Isn't that what we call it? These other two molecules, I'll just give the answer away here. So here it is with the traditional lines. Oh, they're not. Yeah, they are. Okay, they're just they're backwards is how I was looking at them. So this is the intricate one up here, see? Huh? Now do we remember our cartoons? Did we give a little faces on these? I think we put some eyeballs in there. And look, there's the plus. 
put some eyeballs in there. We made two little people out of them. I think they were the married couple.